You mean you have a brother? Yes, sir. Well, where is he? Is he here? Donnie became an overnight sensation when he was introduced by the Osmond brothers on the Andy Williams show. This is our little brother, Donnie. He's the youngest of the performing family. When Donnie would come out and try to mimic his brother's singing style and try to mimic their dance steps, the audience ate it up because he was so tiny. When the Osmond Brothers Quartet began giving more time to little brother Donnie, they noticed he was the crowd pleaser. His charm and charisma was apparent at an early age. He helped boost the group's popularity, and they began winning the hearts of teenage fans everywhere. As the years passed and their fame grew, so did the act, and there were two remaining talented Osmond siblings. Jimmy started performing with the group when he was three, and eventually, Marie joined too. My brothers would sing their barbershop harmony or whatever, and then I would come out and do my bit and then run off and then come out for the finale. But the act ended up changing as I grew older. Uh, it was the Osmond brothers, and then I joined, and then Marie joined, and then it became the Osmonds. Over the next seven years, the Osmond brothers were regulars on The Andy Williams Show and became headliners, attracting fans worldwide. The group was known for pushing to the top, and the next logical step in their career was to record a record. I remember the day when I was asked to sing lead. It was in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and the song was One Bad Apple. And we all get up on the microphone to, uh, to see who had the best sound, and I got picked. And then I sang the basic lead, and then Donnie did the, the answers. And then that was the sound. We decided to, re to uh, record, and then we had this hit called One Bad Apple. And it opened up a new door for us, a whole new realm. I remember sitting at home in Los Angeles. We were listening to the radio on the countdown. And it came up there to number, and now the number one record, The Osmonds, One Bad Apple. We scream like crazy. Two months after One Bad Apple was released, The Osmonds became instant teen sensations. By 1971, The Osmonds, as a group and solo artists, won a collective total of nine gold records that superseded The Beatles and Elvis's gold record sales in a single year. Other hits soon followed. When the records be started to happen and the girls started to scream and there was kind of pandemonium going around and we weren't sure how to quite take that. We, uh, it took us by surprise. Uh, we didn't uh, get caught up with it. In fact, we were a little nervous of it because when you'd go out into a crowd or you know, and they would scream and grab your hair and it wasn't any fun to get into that kind of a situation. Hysteria with the Osmonds was an everyday occurrence. Um, there were more times than not that I feared for my own life, let alone theirs. In 1973, when we landed at Heathrow Airport, uh, it was just a mob scene over there in England. Uh, we couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. The Osmonds were protected by expertise, and as the singers waved to the crowd, a barricade on the viewing balcony gave away. Police had a difficult time pushing back the girls, who kept surging forward despite the falling bricks. One of the most amazing exits that we ever made in London, uh, because of the amount of people outside, and the Bobbies just wanted to get us out, was that two fire trucks showed up. One in front, one in back, two Bobby... Uh, two police cars behind them and then our limo was in the middle and we didn't know what they were doing this for because uh, we just got in the car they slammed it they locked it and here we went the sirens going and all of a sudden the hoses at full force were blowing people right out of the streets clearing the way i couldn't believe it by 1974 Collectively, the Osmonds were world-famous singing sensations who had earned over 34 gold and platinum records. With the success of One Bad Apple, the Osmonds became worldwide sensations, and there was another addition to the group waiting in the wings. Although the Osmond brothers shared their fame and success, younger brother Donnie was constantly singled out as the group star. 
After the release of their hit record, One Bad Apple, Donny Osmond became an international teen idol. And little by little, day by day, record by record, Donny established himself as a real artist and a real entertainer. And it was a, the perfect time for a white, young, male artist to come out and to be their puppy love. I mean, when you think about it, it all was perfect, wasn't it? And it was all that little innocent sex appeal with uh, the man of their dreams. It all just worked, you know. It was great. <laughs> it was great. I didn't have any problem balancing it, of being a devout Mormon and being a sex symbol. I mean, that's a name that people put on it. I had a big black book, but it was very rarely used. <laughs> While Donnie and his brothers continued to dominate the spotlight, the Osmond family was about to produce yet another singing sensation, little sister Marie. Marie didn't even want to be in the entertainment business. Uh, I remember many, many times we'd try to get her to uh, sing a song or work on a guitar lick, and he just didn't have any interest. And they wanted to try her out. They wanted to see what uh, kind of audience appeal she had and how she liked it. Marie had been performing with us off and on as kind of like a solo artist, this little novelty act, you know, the, li the only little girl in a family of nine. And she'd come on, sing her little songs, and then we'd kick her off stage. Uh -huh. She was well received, and she liked it. She thought, golly, I'm waking up to something here I didn't know I liked. Actually, I'm the one that made them change their name to the Osmonds. <laughs> it could no longer be the Osmond Brothers. But it wasn't until about 73 when Marie introduced Paper Roses, she really became a full-time fixture on stage. Paper roses, oh, how will those roses seem to be? But they're only imitation, like imitation love. I was in England with my brothers when I found out that Paper Roses went to number one. And I kept saying, get out of here. No way. There's no way. And uh, I guess I still am the youngest female to have her solo debut record go to number one. By the early 70s, both Donnie and Marie were attracting sizable teen audiences, a fact that soon caught the attention of TV executives. That's when uh, Fred Silverman, who was president of ABC at the time, said that would make a very interesting show. And that's when the Donnie and Marie show was created. Hi, I'm Donnie. Tonight, I'm Marie. Tonight, I guess uh, the Osmond Brothers. In 1976, the Donnie and Marie show premiered on television sets across America. With the spotlight shining most brightly on Donnie and Marie, their supportive older brothers moved behind the scenes, and the family worked together to ensure the show's success. The Osmonds have a kind of a philosophy. To us, it doesn't matter which Osmond's out front as long as it's an Osmond. Wayne did tons of music. Yeah. Bless his heart. He worked so hard. I was working in uh, the audio and uh, making sure everything was recorded right. In fact, I ended up uh, putting down all the orchestra and recording all of Donnie Marie vocals and our vocals, all the background singers. Jay was involved in actually choosing all the music, which was a big job. You know, like the little bit country, little bit rock and roll segment. Jay spent a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, what songs are they going to sing? Jay was the one responsible for all the terrible choreo choreography. <laughs> Jay you, know, was... you know that, that Johnny and Marie signature stuff that we used to do? Not all those terrible. Jay. That was Jay. Thank you, Jay. Alan and Merrill uh, got involved in producing the show. Merrill came up with a lot of the crazy ideas we did. Uh, and Jimmy just danced with uh, chickens. <laughs> bright and a 
incredible talent. And Marie is the same. The two of those together just played off each other so well, almost like Sonny and Cher. You know, uh, we received lots of letters from all of our friends out there. And of course, you know, I, uh, <laughs> well, I get a few more letters than Marie, so. <laughs> Donnie, we don't count the mail addressed to occupant. <laughs> They're enormous producers, and uh, uh, they were always so grandiose, I'd, I'd say, that can't be done. And it would shut down the conversation whenever they heard me say that, and they'd look at me like, haven't you learned there isn't such a word as can't? And they really believe that. Donnie and Marie also paired up to record several successful pop albums. Their first hit, I'm Leaving It All Up To You, was number four on the top 100 charts. They also received an award for favorite country duo at the 1976 American Music Awards. That same year, the Donnie and Marie show won a People's Choice Award for favorite TV variety series. One of Donnie and Marie's frequent guest stars was their baby brother Jimmy, who by this time already had an extremely successful career in Japan. Jimmy was the first of the Osmond family members to earn a gold record as a solo artist. Good night, everybody. Back in the States, the Donnie and Marie show was rapidly approaching its final episode. The original Donnie and Marie show ended back in 1979. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to go our own separate ways. We wanted to do our own things. Of course, we were solo artists before the Donnie and Marie show. And we just wanted to keep pursuing that. The Osmonds had built a successful musical career as a family. But as they grew older, they also grew tired of the relentless pace of show business. And when the Donnie and Marie show ended, and I felt like breaking up with, with Marie, and we both felt like, hey, it's time to separate. Can you imagine the resistance that we got? Because it, it's the end of an era. I think everybody's careers do this. If it doesn't, it's not normal. The entertainment business is so fickle, and, and, and it's like what we call it riding a roller coaster. I mean, it's up and down and up and down. It just depends how many times you want to keep climbing up to the next peak, you know. <laughs> Although the Donnie and Marie show had four successful seasons, separation was inevitable. The Osmond family decided to part and go their separate ways. When we return, the Osmonds deal with life out of the spotlight. I think the entertainment business really did hurt us in some ways. And Donny Osmond rolls with the punches. And I thought, oh my God, Donny Osmond's going to kick my butt. I'm going to have to leave the country. Next on Famous Families. By the early 1980s, the Osmonds' popularity was fading. Alan, the leader of the group, branched out into television production and produced live events with brother Merrill. I learned how to produce fireworks spectaculars with marching bands and choirs and so forth. So then, my brother Alan and I put together the Stadium of Fire in Provo, Utah, which is one of the largest live events every year, 4th of July. Wayne's love of flying led to a jet pilot's license funny thing is I could fly before I could drive a car. I had my mother <laughs> drive me to the airport, <laughs> then I'd fly around all over the place, and then she'd come pick me up because I couldn't drive, but I could fly. <laughs> and Jay, a first-rate drummer, got a degree in public relations. I decided I'm going to go to college, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to be a normal person. So I tried out for football at BYU. I aced my college courses, and uh, I even became a counselor at the university just to see what it was like to do something different than show business, and it was a great experience for me. Despite their celebrity status, the Osmonds weren't immune to life's challenges. In 1987, Alan was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Eight years after Alan's diagnosis, Wayne discovered he had a brain tumor. I always had headaches, migraines, and well, since I was a little boy. So when I was 44, I had uh, this removed from my brain, and they didn't have much expectations for me. And uh, by the goodness of our Heavenly Father, I've been very blessed. I'm still here. I think that a lot of the things that happened to my family would break most families up. And it's amazing to me. That's well, not amazing. It just shows that we love each other. I think.